All right, this is Demonoclipse with a review, if you will, of the ARL-44. ARL-44 is the Tier 6 heavy tank for the French. And surprisingly, I like it. Now, those words coming out of my mouth about a French tank that I've condemned most of the French tanks. They suck horribly, but like people have said this before, that you have to slog your way through the shit in order to get the, to the good tanks. Unfortunately, I found this to be rather true in almost all respects. Now, Basic thing about the ARL-44 is that your starter turret is a giant cardboard box. Yeah. Everyone knows I don't like this turret. But, surprisingly, I've pinged off a few shots off of it that I didn't think I'd be able to otherwise. Basic hull armor on it is 120-50-50. I have pinged a few shots off the front of this. I kind of knew that. I mean, it is a fairly extreme angle for 120 millimeter. I've pinged shots off of it that are usually capable of penetrating 170, 180. So it's not that bad. Hopefully, when you went through the BDRG1B, you got the 90 millimeter DCA 30. Another thing is, you make very good money with this thing. Good money entailing that. I went into a match, got around 400 experience, I came out 30,000 credits richer. That is a good bit of coin in my opinion, and I didn't even do that well in that match. Now, max speed is only 37 kilometers an hour. Um, you don't, I don't have any, the only thing I have upgraded is the turret. Now, the interesting thing about this is that you pretty much do not have to get the track upgrade until you want the 90mm DCA 45 here, which in my opinion is fairly good. You can do that because the ARL-44 Novel turret is lighter than the ARL-44 Experimental turret, a good 500 kilograms lighter. This comes at the cost of 30mm of armor on your side and rear, and you get an extra 10mm on the front. However, the, your turret also becomes a much smaller target. As you can see here, it's a bit more streamlined. However, I don't know which, where um, technically the front armor starts and the side armor begins. Because if this plate right here is all that is 100 millimeters, then you're kind of screwed. If this the if the 100 millimeters extends to the sides here, and then you got 30 here, 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 and here, then you don't have as much to worry about. But if this is 100 millimeter here and these are 30 here, it's a bit more problematic. But the other thing I have to say is that the matchmaking is actually great. I mean, I got a good reload rate. The gun behaves a lot better than it did on the BDRG-1B. Believe me, it behaves a heck of a lot more. I don't have a fucking tumor sticking out of my head. At least, not one that isn't as large as the one on the BDRG-1B. And, generally, I like it. To sound po posh and, um, rather uppity. But, this has been blinking and it's annoying me. Oh yeah, that's a match I had yesterday. But no, just this match I had yesterday. ARL-44, 562 experience, 22,120 credits received. That is a lot of money. At least it is to me. Okay, Um. now I'm going to cut to some replays that I have. I know replays aren't the best thing, but... I'm fairly certain of what's going to happen. I'm going to point out the good bits about the ARL-44 in it and the bad bits. All right. Now, I'm going to... I pulled up a match with my BDRG-1B 
just to go in contrast to the ARL44. Now the BDRG1B that I have here is completely maxed out. There is nothing more I can do with it. This is an account uh, assault battle. Yeah, assault. I am mid tier five, tier five. It's a six to four, six to three on the enemy team, and let's just speed it up a little bit. I know what happens here. Have your roll out. Okay, what I end up doing is just proceeding across, very slowly proceeding across the open terrain here, hoping to get cover behind this. Now. At, with my max engine, my average speed is around 25 kilometers an hour. That sucks, in all honesty. I'm a big target. I have a lot of flat panels on my turret and everywhere else that people can very easily penetrate through. Now, my main feeling here is that... Well, we got one guy AFK. The M6 is AFK, I think, for the majority of the battle. I actually didn't pay much attention to him during the battle, and everyone on my team decided, oh, we're gonna go center. And the people that did decide to go to either side were slow. And M18 Hellcat over there actually went at a decent speed. KV was taken out by an M10, and I don't have any idea where the frick the enemy is. There's a KV too. I'm reloading and hoping to hit this guy. But average damage with this gun is actually fairly shitty. They're hit. Which doesn't mean I can't do good damage with it, I just get bad average damage. Got people sitting out in the middle of the goddamn field for absolutely no reason. In all honesty, I cannot remember whether I died or lived on this in this one. But in general, I just didn't like the BDRG1B even when I first got it. hoping to see one of the fuggers because we're not getting much support in that area. And the entire enemy is pretty much just focus firing on me, but this is a big thing that I don't like about the majority of the early um, tanks here, is that they... That was completely my fault. I know it. One of our is it was completely my fault for getting out of position. <sighs> All right. Now, this is my first match I've ever had with my ARL 44. And I call it by what it is, a cardboard box head. Again, surprisingly, I ping a good number of shots off myself. Many shots I do not believe should have been pinged off of me, but it doesn't really matter. Now, starting off, ARL-44, the one thing you must get with the BDRG-1B is out. the 90mm DCA-30 or whatever it was, because the first gun you get is basically them a them one A1 75mm that you get as an American tank. Is it that good? Not really. You need the extra about... I know you get about an extra... What was it? I can't even remember. Yeah, you get an extra like 15, uh, more like 9 millimeters of penetration. It's worth it, believe me. The extra damage is also worth it. However, it's really dependent upon what you want to do. Okay, now... Average speed starter engine is around 22-23 kilometers per hour on a flat grade. You 
won't be able to get up to your full 37 even while going downhill hill right off the bat I've done it once or twice but the your driver needs to get more driving experience with it unfortunately okay spotted a soma sow yeah I'm just gonna call that thing the sow how about that the sow that works right anyways okay first enemy I encounter would be this M4 kind of I'm like okay one thing that's good with this tank is that it can aim down relatively well here's an easy eight I love it when I put a bullet hole in his mantle and it says we didn't even scratch them Okay, then I see the KV tubes like, oh, fuck. Punched right through their armor. He had the 152, and honestly, I don't know how much damage he is. I'm still waiting for that other mod I like to use to be updated. But everything else is pretty much updated and working how I like to be. All right, 56 health left. KV2 moving that way and like okay they can probably see me so I'm gonna take the long way around now please note you are going to be slow not excessively slow but slow right off the bat I'm just at 4x right now because I we need to go faster okay now grill please note I'm using a 90 millimeter On average, I do that much damage with this 90 millimeter, which is fairly good in my opinion. Even though it's the exact same um, gun as on the BDR G1B, you still will do more damage with it, which in my opinion is fairly good. Okay, sneaking up behind this church hill here. Not really sneaking, but you know. Enemy armor is damaged. And no hit penetration. Those are always lovely. Okay, now. We did win this one, I know. I just left early because I got shot. By 90 millimeters specifically. Still trying to figure out where that, where, who shot me on that one. Oh well. Now this is a battle I consider to be unfair. Tier eight to tier four, it's still fairly good um, tier placement at least for me if I had my Top Gun. With the current gun I have, eh, not so much. Let's just speed this up a little bit. Now, at this point, I've kind of seen it that the Arrow 44 is kind of a sniper tank. The giant box, though a great target, also gives great stability for the gun, which allows you to shoot relatively accurately. Unfortunately, if I don't actually stop to actually look where I'm shooting, I'm, kind of, I'm, always, I'm pretty much always going to miss. I know it's causing that. I cannot fix it because it would cost me $400 to do so. Anyways, moving on. Alright, here we go. Now, not that fast. Armor's not that great. However, accuracy is good. Reload rate is good. And I can't wait until I get my next guns. The problem is, is that every gun after this 90mm here will have a slower and slower reload, gradually getting worse and worse. Is that a good thing? Hell no. 
Is there any, really anything I can do about it? No. Oh, dang it. I forgot that button does. Ugh. I'm so used to the old setup and it doesn't work anymore that way. I have no idea what the deck glitch was. And here we go. My gun is fairly good. Spud. Who's Spud? I want to know that. Who is Spud? Oh, Spud kill. Okay. Now I see. Bugger. We have M7 Priest and the T25 AT. Both still alive. What I'd like to know is why it seems that people think they have to defend the original base if you don't pretty much you just try to get to the uh, either you probably have to meet the enemy halfway like down here around h6 or so h7 or not j7 6 something like that in that area down there and then just make sure they don't get near it. I mean, the Air All 44 is not an outstanding tank, but it's still good at what it does. Okay, and here we just sit there and capture. Okay, now stats time. Five shots. Two hit the target, 1,000 experience game doubled, so it's five, 501 experience. Credits, 10,512. Out of two shots, I got 5,000 5, credits for each. They're going to nerf that. I know they will. They will nerf that. But for now, it's what I got. Now... At this point, I've kind of fallen in love with the dang thing. I don't know what it is about the ARL-44, but it's great. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's really nothing bad. I, there's a few things bad I can say about it, like the starter gun is shitty and it's too damn slow, but it's like slog through shit, get on Golden Island. <laughs> It's pretty much how I can describe it. I mean, I still get fairly pissed in live games instead of replays. Okay, and as you can see, three people going over here, KV-1S. We nailed them back. Actually hit the target, amazingly. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Okay, a guy in his T-3485 said, I'm here to rent a room in the hotel, ARL-44. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I had to pause it for that. It looks like a house. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. It does. I Yes, Zer Stern. Zer Stern. Zer Stern. I, I can't pronounce that. It does look like a house. It behaves like a house. But it's not a brick shit house. <laughs> like I was just paying attention to the game. I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on around me. Balls. There we go. Get rid of his cover. Shoot him! North kind of, my radio, my, the thing I hate the most is my radio sucks really badly. And I wish one thing they'd improve is tell us how, like how many meters by how many meters each map is. I would love that. It would improve my gameplay experience so much because I'd actually be able to tell what the frick's going on. 
Well, at least one fac function of it, anyways. Uh, and I'm gonna get a better gun. I mean, the top gun I can get has 212 millimeters of penetration, which is pretty much equal to the 88 long on the Tiger and all the German tanks, really. I can't actually remember what figure it is. And right there, I think I'm trying to figure out where the frick he penetrated me. It's like right there. And that decal for the penetration uh, kind of doesn't look right, but I'm not going to complain that much about it. There we go, by sun. He's gone. Find another target. My one accredited kill the entire match. There's an M4. Watch this. Enemy vehicle destroyed. What can I say? It's a better sniper than most of my German tanks. And for some reason that the um what is it? The feet per second, the speed of the bullet is a lot easier to read. Enemy is hit. And then there's this no hit, hit penetration. No, no damage penetration bullshit that we all know about and love with all of our black burnt out hearts. Now an M6 is back at our base defending it. Um, yeah, he doesn't do that good of a job, but I'm not going to complain that he's at least trying. <sighs> and I'm glad because he also halts the capture on our base. And I just lose sight of him because my radar is so damned shitty. I'm still slow. My engine upgrade will fix that, hopefully. At least maybe I can get up to 30 kilometers an hour instead of 22. Aim, aim, aim. Need engine upgrade. Yep, yes I do. My shell goes high and I'm waiting for it to reload. Takes about 10 seconds to reload and not enough time. Okay, now this game I actually made rather shitty credits on. But the way I figured it here is that I usually do about 250 damage per round so I make about 20 credits per shot therefore out of those seven hits I only did approximately um yeah I don't want to do the math <sighs> 450 damage or so because considering I killed these two guys I kind of believe it I think I like one shot at all these guys simply because, uh, or like this guy hurt his tracks. Not even sure what those two were, but anyways. Now this next match, I'm going to go and show you with my um, AR-44. I was playing with the new turret. All right, this is a match that, in all honesty, if I had survived, I would have gotten steel wall. That's the only reason I kept it. Don't have a lot of fast movers. I know that. I know that. Okay, we got a T50 on the hill and VK3601H. Honestly, I have no idea where my shell went for this one. Um, not much I can do about that. We nailed it back. Didn't in all honesty do that badly during this match, but. If this guy had just stayed around D0, D0, my good sir, then maybe something could have happened here. But an enemy snuck up beside me because no one spotted him. I was the only one in position to be spotted or spot him because this guy decided to move behind me. 
Well, not behind me. He stood, like, right there. Should have stayed, like, right there so we could see up the fucking hill. But nope. It's, po it's possible. It's highly possible we could have. Yeah, and I'm like, how the fuck can they see me? An invisible fucking tank bullshit. Yeah, the KV-1S and a couple mediums. Yes, fuck, we need eyes, you moron! And look at all these shells pinging off of me, seriously. If I would have survived, I would have gotten steel wall, but I did not survive. Can you guess why I didn't survive? Because we didn't have anyone decided to spot for us. Who should have spotted? Wrong button. I thought I fixed that. Anyways, that VK3601A, it's probably Pokemon or whatever the heck it's called, should have spotted for us. But no, of course not. And I'm just kind of pissed. Anyways, if I would have survived, if someone would have spotted, it would have been better. All right. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, there we go. That's the turret. Now, I didn't do particularly well in this match. In fact, it's, this is the match that I pulled up when I first started this video. Well, the, you know, the little up bar, whatever the heck it's called. This video has gone on long enough, in my opinion, so I'm just going to scoot ahead a little bit. 2x right here. T25 dash two. But like most tanks, if you know how to position yourself correctly, you're gonna get very far with it. Me, I'm I'm kind of pissed that there's a hole in his mantle, and for some reason I still did damage him. Yeah, and it, that shell went right through my freaking mantle. So it just, the mantle on this turret is shit. It's shit. There's no nice way to put it. It is shit. T20 right there is being shot at by two different tanks and artillery and other tanks as well. There's an M6 going down here. I shoot. That one didn't go through. That's what happened. Gotcha. And then I blind fire and kill him. <laughs> Again, in-game replay browser would make this so much easier, but whatever. Okay, now. Let's see what we can see. I'm still running at like 4x right now, so do not expect yourself to move this quickly. You are slow, tank. And then Wing Viper in his VK3601 P says it sucks being small. Then I reply, well, you can get into very interesting situations or positions with that. Really weird jokes, I know. This tank rapes face. Alright, whatever. Anyways, sitting here being bored. M26. I miss him. He misses me. Hopefully my allies hit him. Cause that would be awesome. In so many ways. Enemy armor is hit. We hit each other. And again, my turret sucks. Balls. There's not enough angling on it. And then the T-34 up there finally gets him. Right now, we're pretty much completely killing them. And there's a small map error here. I don't understand why they haven't fixed that yet. Anyways, moving on. And this is where I get a little overconfident. Because my turret won't be able to absorb penetrate, be able to absorb penetration from this guy's gun. And my hull can, but not my turret. Everyone get out! 
And I'm kind of just sitting there waiting for my, I was just like, okay, allies, we're kind of running them over. Get your freaking ass out of cover and give me a hand. All in all, so far, the ARL-44 is fun. I won't deny that. Just when I play it, it's it's got issues. All the stock tanks got issues. I'm basically stock right now. I got the turret upgrade. Does that really mean anything? No, because everyone has more penetration than my turret actually offers. But it works for the most part. I mean, I can't hold down as well with this as I could with the giant cardboard box, and I won't get joked at as much with it, but it's it's not that bad. Oh, on a side note, if you want, if you have a good processor on your computer and want better um, frame rate, turn on post-processing and advanced post-processing. For some reason, it uh, pretty much tripled my um, frame rate, but you need a good processor for it because it kind of jumped up my processor usage a little bit, but otherwise, yeah, it's just running a heck of a lot better now on everything. I was even able, able to increase my graphics settings on a few things. Not that high, not that low, but... Now I can now I don't have as much crippling when I look over long distances, which they still need to fix. Oh yeah, um, I never pointed this out, but there's some major um animation glitches with this thing. For instance, when I'm driving forward, this will this will rotate along this axis, so it's pretty much going a huge circle all the time. It's really annoying, and all the wheels do that. Basically, all the wheels do that. I don't think they made the wheels that loose, but I don't know. Again, whatever. Air L44, um, stock. So long as you remember to get the 90 millimeter, that's pretty much stock. I think I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I still haven't gotten high enough to get like that. I'm pretty much going to stick either with the 90 millimeter or the 105. The big thing about the 105 is that you can pretty much use it stock with the AMX M4 here. And you can use the 90mm DCA45 as soon as you get the turret upgrade. So you pretty much want to make sure you get as much unlocked as possible. I have no idea if I can use this. Well, yeah. That's pretty much a universal engine. That's a universal radio. And that's just for that. So, not that bad, not that good. It's fairly fun for me to play at least. That's what really counts, wouldn't you say? Alright, this has been Demonocalypse. Thank you for watching.